Welcome to the We Invested Podcast, where we teach you how to save and make more cash. Today on the We Invested Podcast, we have with us Evan Van Auken, and he is an, an inventor, investor, entrepreneur, and the founder of Van Adder Growth. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me here, seriously. This yes, is, I'm sir. psyched. Man, I'm pumped up too, man. Thank you for joining me. So can you let the people know where they can find you on social media? Yes, yes. Uh, you can go to any any Vanitor, Vanitor or Vanitor Growth on any channel. You can find me. Just type it in and you'll see me. You'll see my big cheesy grin <laughs> and my portrait. You'll be able to click on me, but at Vanitor or at Vanitor Growth. For sure, man. So let's just jump right into it. What exactly is Vanitor Growth and how did you get started? That's a good question. And not a lot of people ask me that. But the answer is, is I was reading a book on entrepreneurship by Gary Vee called Crushing It. It's the yellow and black cover. It's a legit book. And I was listening to it. I wasn't reading it because listening is better. He narrates it himself. And he was talking about personal branding and how to grow yourself and represent, you know, the companies that you have created and how important it is to grow your personal brand on social media. It's like, oh shit, okay. I'll give it a shot. And so I, um, I originally made um, TikToks about firefighting stuff because I, I did, did that for the last eight years. And then I realized well, after I put out a couple business TikToks that people were interested. People wanted to learn more about business. So I started making more of them and it started to catch on. And I realized that I could share those hard lessons I learned along the way with people on social media, especially TikTok, and they would get value out of it. And I was like, let's go, let's see what happens. And so I literally have started this like four months ago, building my personal brand. So this is not a long-term thing. I'm still figuring it out, to be honest with you. For sure, man, that's dope. So how did you come up with that name? Like that name definitely stands out. It, I like V's, I like hard K's. And uh, there's just a couple sounds I've always liked. And my last name is Van Auken and Evan. And so I just grabbed the van and I just threw some letters down and I just never changed it honestly it's different and <laughs> yeah, it's different enough that you won't forget it and you'll recognize it but it's not so weird that you're like you don't know how to spell it exactly man it's a dope name <laughs> so so I, I i stumbled across your page i found you um because of like gary v pretty much of 1 37 p.m so they they like reposted one of your videos on on um instagram and i thought it was dope like the content and the the material and the value that you were given and um, Thanks, i think dude. i think you were talking about creating an llc and how to pay yourself out of a business from mm -hmm. your business so could you just let the people know like what are some of the benefits of creating an llc oh dude that's a really good question too so i talk a lot about llc's because it's something that intimidated the shit out of me in the beginning I was like, oh, I don't know what this means. I don't know what I'm doing. I thought LLC stood for Licensed Lending Corporation. I didn't know shit, <laughs> right? And so as I go down this rabbit hole and as I'm learning more and starting businesses and helping other people start businesses, I'm like, oh man, LLCs have a lot of benefits, but not in the way that I normally thought they did. I thought they were gonna help me with taxes and you know write-offs and all that stuff. That's not the case. It helps me with protection. And once I finally gained some traction with one of the products that I launched, I realized that protection is important. You know, protecting your assets. Like, dude, if, if my company, like Scorchmarker, for example, one of the companies that I own, if they got sued and I didn't have an LLC and my product hurt somebody, I can lose everything that I have, my house, my bank account, my retirement, my kids and my wife, they'll be screwed. So. I learned that if you put layers of protection in between yourself and your businesses, like LLCs, and you take the time to separate things and do it legit, you can take advantage of the protections that they offer. And once I realized that I could protect myself that way, I protect, my, protect myself from my business and protect my business from me, I was like, oh shit, more people need to know about this. And so that's why I started talking about how important it is. Like not everybody needs to start one, man. Like not everybody needs an LLC to get their side hustle off the ground and be successful. But if you're serious about it and you really want to turn it into a million dollar business, then put yourself through that learning process and just start it. It's only a couple hundred bucks. 
Exactly, exactly. And so something that I got from, I guess, one of your recent TikToks, you were saying that, um, you know, it's, it's good to pay yourself from your business. So it was something like, um, you know, you can't kind of skip taxes if you just hold your money in your business account or in your mm -hmm. LLC. You'll still have to pay income tax on that or, or get taxed on that in some in some way so can you kind of explain a little bit more about how to pay yourself as a business owner through your llc yeah totally um so when i explain how to pay yourself it's assuming that you've already done a couple steps so let me just talk about those five steps real quick if you don't mind oh, yeah. and so when someone's starting a business i kind of have this side hustle checklist that i came up with and so in the beginning when you're fleshing out this idea you start by getting the llc and you know secretary of state whatever you get the lc then you go get your ein which is like your social security number for your business it allows you to open up a bank account and it's free to get so you form the llc and then you get your ein with the government the feds and then you go to a bank and then you open up a bank account right okay cool so you have the the basic setup and then you check with your county to make sure there aren't any business permits you need to do or, or city right because places like Los Angeles are crazy, man. They want they want to get paid. Right. And then the last thing is, is you keep good records. So if you're doing those things, like you have the LC and the EIN and the bank account, and you're keeping good books and good records, then we can figure out um, how to grow the business. For one, we have a good, solid foundation. And then you can learn how to pay yourself. So ideally, the way it works is you make sales and the money comes into your business bank account. And then you spend all that money on expenses you know, phone bills and travel and gas and cars and lighting and equipment and computers, whatever you need that's ordinarily used to run your business and you write that off. And then you have the profit left over. So what do you do with the profit that's in your business bank account? How do you pay yourself with that? And so I was confused on it. I literally, I felt embarrassed for not knowing and for, for having to ask my tax guy. So I was like, I'll make a video on it. And so the simple solution is you just transfer the money from the business bank account to your bank account and you call it an owner's draw. And the reason that works is because when you have an LLC and you have a business, you are taxed on the combined amount. So you and the business combine your money and that's what you're taxed on. So you're going to get taxed on it anyways. So you might as well move it over and take keep good records and account for it if you're going to spend it on yourself. So I know that was kind of a long winded answer, but I had to describe the beginning before I could talk about how to pay yourself. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think you just said step five of that process is to keep good records. So that's like a great segue to my next question. Mm -hmm. um, what is a bookkeeper and why do you personally think that that should be the first person that you hire? Because I fucked it up in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. Yeah. And how did you yeah, do that? It was bad. I'm like, I'm a smart guy. I know how I know basic math, right? Why don't I just open up an Excel spreadsheet and keep track of this shit? And so I did. And as I started to grow and as I started to spend my time doing other stuff, I pushed the accounting off to the back burner and I and I waited and I didn't do it. And so at the end of the year, come tax time, I've got all these receipts and uh, final figures, but I don't know how I got there. How am I going to write off shit if I don't know what I spent on what? So I was doing myself a disservice by not keeping track of everything because I couldn't take the maximum write offs for my company. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. Like, I didn't know what to do. And so I started asking around professionals and people that I respected in the business industry. And I'm like, what do I do here? Like, dude, you need something to do your books. Like, what are you doing? And so then I started educating myself on bookkeeping and taxation. And that was the beginning of kind of like that self-education period. So the bookkeeper's job is to go into your QuickBooks account or your accounting software and make sure that all the expenses match all the money that came out of your accounts. Make sure that all the money comes in matches and it's all, and it's all reconciled and that all the expenses are put in the right category and everything is just nice and tight, right? I like tight tidy books because when you have tight tidy books my cpa can just go right in and be like maximum tax benefits man that's dope and look man i'm i'm i've been looking for a cpa for like the last past four months i've been trying to find the right one so 
could you just let the people know like how do you benefit from hiring a personal cpa yeah definitely so real quick though that bookkeeper i don't want people to think that it's really really expensive like it's only between like 100 and 300 bucks a month depending on who you're using and how much work they have to do bookkeepers are not expensive and they do what they're good at keeping books and then it allows you to do what you're good at which is run your business and build your brand and you know drizzle your secret sauce all over everything you know you're not you can't do that if you're worried about the books exactly yeah so the cpa is a good question because i had the same problem i went through four before i found the right guy that could help me you know um, because they don't classify cpas like they classify lawyers you know they have divorce attorneys and constitutional law attorneys and corporate attorneys but they don't only have cpas and eas right and you're like okay where do i start and so i read this book called tax-free wealth by tom wheelwright and i talk about it all the time i link to it in my bio because it changed my perspective on taxes and it really helped me understand that the tax code was written to save you money you just got to learn the rules dude and i'm like what <laughs> okay so how do i find a tax guy that knows the rules and in the back of the book there was a list of questions and to ask your CPA and a list of questions your CPA should ask you. And they were insightful. And I was like, this is big brain shit. And so I called it. I called the author. <laughs> I picked up the phone and I was like, hey, I want your help. I don't care how much it costs, but I need an expert. I want an expert in this arena. And of course, he doesn't do taxes for people like me. You know, he would, ne he would never. But he did get me set up and referred to the right people. So now I have a CPA who works for me and knows what I'm trying to accomplish and helps me structure my entities so that I can take the maximum tax benefit. So you pay, you pay a little up front to save a bunch down the road. And that is probably the main benefit of having a CPA who knows their shit or an accountant or an EA who really knows their shit. You get what you pay for. And it saves, it saved me a ton of money so far. For sure, man, that's dope. And this is great. This is great business advice right now. And so when I was on your website a little earlier, I saw something that I wasn't really too familiar with and I, I really honestly never heard of. So I definitely wanted to ask you, um, what is business insurance and why is it important? Yeah, I didn't know. We, when I, my product got accepted into Michael's and uh, big box retailers, um, they were asking me for a COI. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You know, basically they wanted me to prove that I had liability insurance. And so they, if they, if that my product had a lawsuit, they weren't on the hook for it. And I was like, shit, how do I find that? What even, what even is that? <laughs> I had the same thing. And so after like calling a bunch of different insurance places and getting put on hold forever, I finally reached out and finally got a hold of a commercial insurance broker. And he was like, dude, all they want to know is that you have prepaid attorneys ready to fight your battles for you. I said, okay, well, how do I get prepaid attorneys? He's like, that's what liability insurance is. You can get insurance for whatever you want, but for you, you need general liability insurance. And so you're gonna pay like mm, 2000 bucks a year and we're gonna have prepaid attorneys ready to go in case you get sued and you can get sued twice a year. Sound good? And I'm like, yeah, sounds good. Okay, cool. So now I know that I have not only the LLC to protect myself and my family from anyone that litigates against me, but I also know that I have an insurance policy that I can just say, I need help. And they're going to come over and all the attorneys are going to handle it. They're going to handle it. For sure, man. So it sounds like you're protected like from all angles. Yeah, I'm big on that. I like, I like being protected and I wish more people knew about it because it wasn't, it's not that hard to set up. Okay. Okay. And, and so before I kind of move on to the next topic, um, I do want to hear more about the scorch marker and kind of how you came up with that and what exactly that is. Oh yeah. Let me tell you about that real quick. Uh, I think I have one. I do. This is it right here. I know my camera's reversed, but the scorch marker um, was invented when I was working on a project for the fire department. So, um, when I got hired, the fire department, you go through a, a 16 week Academy and they beat the shit out of you and they train <laughs> the shit out of you. It's like, get up at three 30 every morning. You know, I'm not going bed to bed until, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night and just physical, mentally exhausting. And to commemorate that we wanted to, um, make a plaque. 
And so I did, I had a wood shop and I cut out this big, beautiful walnut eight, you know, and I engraved our names on glass and raised it off. And um, we had our badges and leather and a big ax and a halligan across the back. It looks sick. I wish I had a picture to show you right now, but it's not handy. And I really wanted to wood burn our motto together in, together out. And so I grabbed my soldering iron and I plugged it in and I, I heated it up and I went to town. I'm like, all right, I got this. And I go to burn in the tea and then I fucked up the whole project. <laughs> I just destroyed it because I was not good at it. I'm not someone who's not um, like artistic, like I could figure shit out, but it was so hard. It was getting stuck on wood grain. It sucked. And so my wife and I put our heads together and we took some inspiration from some YouTubers that we saw and we put together and researched the chemicals needed to do it chemically with heat. And so we tested it, it worked. And so we cut out some stencils on my stepmom's vinyl cutter, you know, just the letters and I stuck it on there and I painted this stuff in there that I mixed up in a water bottle and I heated it up and holy shit, it burnt the wood. It was so cool. And then I uh, shelved the idea for a couple months. And I didn't think about it and I just let it go. And then I had a conversation with a guy at work. I'll never forget this conversation. And it's the conversations like these that change lives, right? He was talking about a brand that he had started on Amazon himself. And he was making an extra $8,000 a month selling a watch band that he invented just out of paracord. Oh. Yeah. And he told me that he invent he tied this watch band. He found a supplier in China off Alibaba that could make it for him. And once they reached a, a prototype that he was happy with, he would order them, put them in baggies, send them to Amazon, and he was making money. And I'm like, dude, I can do that. And so I was like, I got an idea. And so I went and I bought some empty markers off Amazon and Alibaba, and I found a supplier. And I bought empty like chalk markers. And I started mixing up this liquid and I started filling them up with a syringe individually. And I started selling them on Amazon. And that's how I started this entire company. And then, you know, this last month, we, I mean, we did, we've been doing great. We've been doing great. We've been kicking ass. And it's been two years of just rapid growth. Man, that's dope. So how does it feel to see something that you, that you created based off a need starting to take off and be successful and, and help others? Dude, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting experience because we were sitting there. I remember the day that it was like, uh, just a couple of years ago, but it feels like yesterday my wife was sitting here like, we made $200 extra this month. Like, <laughs> right. holy cow, dude, that's so sick. We just had so much money. That's like a, that's like almost like a car payment. You know, we were so excited about it, you know, and now oh, it's grown so much and we have employees. You know what the most rewarding thing is, is finding a good team, right? Good designers, good web designers, blog writers, just good videographers, just good people to work with and then making shit happen. If that's the best part. And that's what I like the most. I like running the team and talking to people and just having experts and A players around me all the time. It's so fun. Yeah, for it's sure. super fun. It feels good, dude. For sure, man, for sure. So not only are you an inventor and an entrepreneur, but you're also an investor. And so on TikTok and on YouTube, I see that you've had like a few uh, videos talking about Bitcoin and your thoughts on Bitcoin. And, mm -hmm. and I, I see that you that you believe that Bitcoin can reach 100,000 by 2021. So in 21, tw in 2021, in 2021. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So for sure. So so what are your thoughts about the future of Bitcoin? Um, I've been in interested and invested and screwing around with the cryptocurrency space for for a lot of years i've always been interested in it it's always been something that's fascinated me and it's something that i know a lot about i can go have a conversation with anybody about this topic whether they're a developer for any of these coins or whether they're on wall street or whether it's just a, a soccer mom it doesn't matter because i've had those conversations with all walks of life and i have experience in every single one so um I like, for example, I've built uh, mining rigs. I built hundreds of Ethereum mining rigs. You know, I run a, I run a Tezos node. And so my, I have a computer set up in my room that validates transactions on the network. And I've been, you know, into this space for a long time. I've tried day trading it. I suck. That's not for me. <laughs> um, but the reason I think Bitcoin is going to, uh, I, I see Bitcoin as the digital gold. 
that's how I see it. I see it as the, 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 the first, the pioneer, the original digital value currency, just as gold is like our original physical value currency that stands the test of time. I don't think that Bitcoin is going to be spent in a coffee shop. It's not going to happen. The transaction speeds are too slow and there aren't enough Bitcoin out there to make it divisible enough. It's just not the market cap will be per the amount of Bitcoins out there because there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin out there. That's not enough currency to support a world economy. So I do think it's going to be the gold standard, though, and I do think it's going to be treated as a hedge for inflation and a hedge for un um, uncertain economic times. So I think people are going to start moving into it more and more, especially as they see inflation rise, especially as they see the Fed continuing to print money, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars a month. And millennials and Gen Z's are start, going to stop buying gold and we're going to move into the gold of our generation, Bitcoin. So. The reason I think Bitcoin's going to get 100,000 in 2021 is a simple math. I was looking at the market cap compared to gold and Bitcoin is 25 times smaller than gold right now based on market cap. And for those of you who don't know what market cap is, it's the total value of the entire thing in the world. So all the Bitcoin in the world is worth like $400 billion right now. All the gold in the world is worth 9 trillion. So if Bitcoin just becomes one fifth as popular as gold which is very, very possible, then it will be worth $100,000 a coin. And that's just based on the market cap calculation. So I really think that's possible in 2021. I really do. But I've always been, I've been dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin for years. Man, that's crazy, man. Look, you, you're persuading me right now to go get more Bitcoin like as we speak. <laughs> Dude, I have that FOMO all the time. I don't know about you, but like, I dude, swear. <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. So there, I like, the only way that I can do it now is I just set it up on recurring purchases weekly. I'm like, just let, let the computer do it so I don't have to, you know, look at my phone all the time looking for the red days. <laughs> exactly, man. And there's so many other like cryptocurrencies out right now. There's so many mm -hmm. like up and coming. Everybody's talking about um, Ripple, XRP. And mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've been kind of watching Ethereum for a while. So that was the first one that I really paid attention to because when I first learned about Bitcoin, I thought, okay, I missed the run. Like, let me just hop on Ethereum. So I kind of did a little bit of research on that. But man, it's just crazy how Bitcoin is still running and like, mm -hmm. you know, not stopping. Mm -hmm. Did you have any crypto in 2017 when it first yes, hit? Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. So I was mining Ethereum when it was $1,200 per Ethereum. And some man, of these computers were making like $2,000 a month. It's crazy. Man, I swear, man, it looked like. I've never met a miner before. I never even really knew what it was. And I'm like, bro, so how do you produce these Bitcoins? Like, how do you get them? How do it's like, man, people just mine them, bro. You have to, you know, you have to find a miner or whatever it is to, I guess, to get like the inside scoop. But that's dope, man. Yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip how the the, the new systems are, are, are create currency. Because Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, have you heard the term proof of work before? No. Oh. So they call those two currencies proof of work algorithms. Because in order for new coins and in order for transactions to be validated, a computer has to work its ass off and mine, right? And do the complex calculations to, to verify that. And then you have other stuff like uh, proof of stake. And that's where the transactions get validated and new currencies um, released to people who stake it or hold on to it. So it's interesting. Tezos is like that. Ethereum is going that way with Ethereum 2.0. So it's going to be an interesting space. Ethereum is a good coin to be in right now. Ethereum is man, going to blow up. Man, that's dope. Look, we getting deep, man. We getting deep into it. Yeah. So, um, you know, just kind of going back a little bit, did you always have like an entrepreneurial spirit or is this something that developed over time? It was always there. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah. 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 I was selling CDs when I was in middle school and I was burning CD. I was getting song lists. They'd write them down. They would hand them to me. I'd go home. I'd burn them. I'd download them on Napster or LimeWire and I'd burn them onto a CD. I'd do a little artwork and I'd stamp it down a label and I'd put it in a case and I'd charge five bucks. You know? That's dope. I used to do something kind of similar, bro, but I didn't, I never got it. I never even heard of anybody stamping artwork on it. That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would type out the song titles and stuff. It was fun. I had a good time. I worked on like go pads and I would soup up go pads and scooters, you know, on the street. And, um, you know, I worked in restaurants and fry cook and delivered pizzas. I've done all kinds of jobs, man. But 
I've always had that hustle mindset and I've always wanted more. And I've never been just satisfied. I've never had that feeling of, oh, I'm, I am, I'm pumped, dude. Let's go. Let's do this. You know, to be doing what I think about in the shower, to be doing what I think about while right when I wake up in the morning, to be doing what I'm thinking about when I'm daydreaming, this doesn't work for me. This is the happiest I've ever been. And dude, it's, it's a trip. It's a trip when you finally dig in and figure out what it is that you're passionate about. You just say, fuck it and go. Exactly, bro. Exactly. And so just kind of listening to your history, man, it seems like you've always been on top of like what's new and what's current. So that kind of brings me to my next point of like you have a great presence on social media, uh, you know, great website um, and especially TikTok, which is how I found you on TikTok via Instagram. So how has social media helped to expand your brand and your business? It was TikTok that did it for me. It was nothing other than TikTok. Yep. Yeah. It was, I, I owe it all to literally, I owe it to TikTok. And the reason is, is because that's where the attention is right now. And I was able to get on TikTok and provide just a little bit of value. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of value in that space. And people started paying attention. And it gave me the, it put some wind in my sails. It gave me um, like a little bit of hope that like, oh shit, like I'm not too late. Like, yeah. dude, I didn't know much about social media until then. I kind of wrote it off. I thought it was, you know, um, it wasn't as important. I didn't know that this is the new wa word of mouth. This is the new water cooler. This is the new club. Like, this is a new space where you go get your name out there. How are you going to get attention? And how are you going to present yourself? And what are you going to do with that attention? And these are all questions that have started to pop up all because of TikTok, man. Because, you know, I, I, dude, it was crazy. It was crazy to see, you know, people care that much about some drawings on a piece of paper like no joke it was talk man it's like it's it's very organic content and it's just like it's just you being you and transparent and honest and like the people just eat it up and it's it's crazy because like when i hear you talk i think you said you read uh gary v crush it or crush yeah it. No, I, no, I respect that it. guy yeah mm -hmm. and so i had that book in 2017 i, I read the um i read the book in 2017 and it seems like you use some of those same principles from that book and then kind of transferred it over to TikTok and your social media and how you run it. And I just think it's crazy because when Crushing It came out, TikTok wasn't even a thing yet. Mm -hmm. So to take what you learned from, from a book that was like three years old, three or four or five years old and like apply it to something new and what's going on now, it just shows like, okay, you really have that mindset and you really retain like what it is that you learn and, and use it in real life. It's true. I do use it in real life. I straight up, I will learn something in a book or in an audiobook or in a podcast, whatever the case may be, even YouTube videos. I love learning on YouTube and I will yeah. apply it to either my own personal finances or I'll apply it to my business. And if it works or if it doesn't work, I can share it with people. And I'm like, I'm literally creating content on shit that I'm going to do anyway. So I might as well just film it and talk about it. And exactly. so it's like this symbiotic thing that is just so fun. I had no idea. Exactly, man. And that's what I think is cool, too. It's like um, social media makes it cool for you to learn in front of the people. So it's like when the people see you learning, it just builds that trust. And they're like, OK, I saw him put in that work. So now I want him to do whatever it is that I saw him working on and studying for the last four or five months. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And so if there's people out there who are still thumbing their noses at TikTok saying, oh, it's just Chinese spyware or that's for just kids for dancing, like. Just know that if you don't get on that app and you don't put your business and yourself out there, you're leaving shit on the table. Like there's low hanging fruit and you can reach out and take as much as you want if you're willing to get over that and just give it a shot. I thought the same thing and uh, I didn't think that it was worth my time. And now I'm like, holy shit, dude, this is so worth your time. Why isn't everybody doing this? It kind of blew my mind a little bit, man. For sure, for sure. And a little earlier, you kind of hit on, um, you know, how it felt to have a, like a good team around you, good blog writers, mm -hmm. good video editors, um, you know, even your wife to help you brainstorm ideas and, and, and kind of get things started. So can you just talk about the importance of having a good team and how you built your team? That's a good question. My wife is my content, our content rock star, dude. She films, she edits, she posts, she interacts. Like our Instagram feed looks so good because of her. 
and our TikTok is blown up because of her and the hard work that she's putting in. Like she's literally watching me do this with our brand and we're talking about it all the time and we're sharing the workload and we're living life and raising our kids and living at home and, and working on these businesses together and, and it's so fun. And so she is like the, the, definitely the, the keystone in our team for sure because she knows her shit. But you can't just do it by yourself and you can't just do it with one other person. You're gonna need a team eventually. So how the hell do you start? You know what, honestly, one of my favorite things to do is to go on Fiverr. I go on Fiverr and I hire five people for one job. I'm like, all right, I need a blog written on wood burning crafts to do with kids or something, right? And I give them the materials and I have all five of them do a blog post. And yeah, it cost me like 50 to 70 bucks, you know, um, per blog post just to check it out sometimes, sometimes 30. But I pick the post that I like the most. And then I reach out to that person and I ask them if they want to continue doing work for me. That's it. And that's how I find the people that I like to work with. So they have to pass a couple of tests. They have to be willing to have conversations with me. They have to be someone that I'd like to work with. They have to be, you know, motivated and have that entrepreneurial spirit. And, you know, they have to be willing to, you know, get their hands dirty and work. And so if they pass those tests and I like their work, I dude, I bring them into the Slack channel and dude, they just grow with us. Um, it's cool. It's really cool. But that's my that's the best way to hire, in my opinion. Nah, man, it's dope, man. You give us some very valuable information right now, man. So <laughs> so you know, what would you say like is your favorite part about being an entrepreneur? Um, I really like seeing that fire light up in people's eyes. Um, one of my favorite things is when people join the chat or shoot me messages on Instagram and they tell me that they started their business because one of my videos, because of one of my fucking TikToks, they started a business <laughs> yeah. that could potentially bring them out of the hustle and get them to the next level. Dude, what? What? I think that's badass. Um, but um, what? Remind, remind me of your question. I'm sorry. I, I, I got lost in that topic. Nah, it's cool, bro. It's cool. So I was saying, what is your favorite part about being an entrepreneur? Okay. Yeah. I, I like the beginning stages. I like that growth part, but my favorite part is to um, seek out the good A players and see how easy I, I literally test myself. It's like, how well can you articulate your vision to this person? And how can you get them to make it happen? with as little intervention as possible from you, right? How good of a job am I doing as a leader to tell people what I want done so that we can do it together? Because if I can make that happen, if I can articulate my vision and they can make it come become real and I can give them what they need to do it, like we can make cool shit happen. Because exactly. companies are really just a bunch of people working together to provide value. That's all it is. So, I like building companies or in the way I look at it, teams of people that are there to do a task, a job, you know, provide Absolutely. value. So that's my favorite part is the team building stuff. Like just, you know, like pulling the strings and making it happen, running the company. I love that shit. Yeah. yeah. So, so when people come to you and say like, Hey man, I started a business because of your video. Like, did you ever think you would have like that much influence over people that you never knew, never met? No, never thought, never thought to. Nah, not in a, not in a million years. I thought I was just learning and just trudging along and doing my thing. I had no idea that people would even be interested in hearing about my business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, man, you do so many things and you just said, like, I guess your favorite part. Um, well, let me not even say it like that. Let me, let me put it a different way. So you make things with your hands. You're an investor. Um, you're an entrepreneur and you enjoy building brands and companies. So out of those four or five things I just named, which one would you say is your favorite? Mm. My favorite is teaching. Mm. Out of all those things, I like educating and creating content the most because I know that I can have a lasting impact and leave a legacy. Like that is, that's the most important thing to me. The companies and the things that I'm building on the side, it's all clout to show people like, look, I've tested this and it works. And I've invested here and it works. Like, yeah, I opened up a health savings account. And I educated myself on it so I could teach you about it. Like it's slept on guys, like get on this. What's wrong with you? So I, that's my favorite part, the teaching. For sure, for sure. So 
what would you say is the single most important reason for your success? <clears throat> you know that mindset of naysaying? You know that negative attitude? Oh, that would never work. No, 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 no. Yeah. That would never work. Or no, I couldn't do that. Or no, that's not worth my time. And, you know, um, the most important thing is to literally realize that the people that are super, super successful and the people that run shit, they are not any smarter than you. They just know different shit. That's it. They're not smarter than you. They can't problem solve better. They're not, they don't have less of a temper. They're not, they don't have better morals. They're the same person. They just know different shit. Mm -hmm. So how do you learn the different shit? How do you learn what they learned? All you got to do is self-educate. And so if you can learn what they learn, you can do what they do because that's the only difference is the knowledge. So where do you go to find the knowledge? And how do you learn the knowledge and how fast can you learn it? And I've been like addicted to that self um, self education and that change, because I've seen how much of an effect it can have in my own life, with my finances and my business and my personal relationships and my family relationships. And shit's real. And shit's real. And it's a and it's a shame that it took a pandemic and TikTok to help me really understand it. Hey, man, it's better late than never. Better late than never. True. That's right. Exactly. Exactly, man. So, you know, in the time of you running your business and building different businesses and brands, can you think of like a critical moment throughout your business journey, like like a fight or flight kind of moment? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, those brands that get ripped off by the Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. one of those I'm one of those mom and pop brands that got copied and everything stolen by their Chinese supplier. No. I spent uh $150 yesterday buying all of the knockoff scorch markers off Amazon. Just so that I could document it and see what they're up to. And dude, my Chinese the supplier that I was working with in China um straight up saw the amount of empty markers I was ordering. It was like, this guy's onto something. Let's do what he's doing. And so they started going to all my, my retailers and all the people I was selling my scorch markers to and be like, Hey, we'll sell them to you cheaper. We made a knockoff, you know? And then they copied my graphics. They copied my, my Amazon listings. They copied my pictures. They copied the way that I had my model set up and my photos. They copied my bullet points, my infographics, like anything they could copy, they did. And now there's like a bunch of competitors and Dude, it was so, it was such a difficult thing for me to deal with. I took it so personally yeah. because that was my brand. It's my baby. This is something I'm working on. How dare you? How could you do that? Like, that's so fucked up. Like, can't you just let me do my thing? Right. And so it was at that time. I'm like, all right, do I have enough left in the tank to really pursue this? Because we haven't been making a lot of money. We don't have shit for this year and th it happened so quick. What am I gonna do? So when you're faced with opposition like that, especially in terms of copyright infringement, you have a fork in the road and you can pursue that channel, you can pursue it legally. You can hire attorneys and you can go and try and um, make sure your cease and desist letters are sent and your brand registered and there's all kinds of things you could do, but it's expensive and it doesn't always work and it's definitely not fast. It right. takes years. My attorney bills are as high as my marketing bills. Or you can innovate. You can get better. And you can smash them in every single other aspect. And so luckily, luckily, we decided that we were going to innovate in addition to pursue it legally. And so that's when I got on. I started, dude, I started traveling around the United States looking for a U.S. supplier. Someone who could offer me something better. Someone who could make it better. Someone I could talk to and we could build something out of. And I found him. And we implemented better features. And I worked with a chemist to make the formula better. And I made my website better. And I made my design better. And I got a social presence. And I started, you know, talking to my customers and understanding what they wanted and what they needed. And that's something that they can't do. That's something that my competitors don't have. They don't have what I have and what my wife has and our team. And they can't beat us in that arena. They can't beat us in marketing. They can't beat us in our clout and with our customer service. So we're still number one. We're still winning, yeah. but we have to keep innovating. And it was a very important lesson for me to learn that 
you can beat it, but you have to work harder. And if you're not willing to work harder, it's going to be, it's going to be really tough. So I don't know. I'm glad I learned that lesson that you can, you can, you can beat them on your own. I, and I wanted to share that lesson in particular because I know there's someone out there that's going through the same thing. They're the winds out of their sails. They're sitting there just like, oh, am I really about to max out this credit card for this last purchase order? Like, am I really about to do this? It worked for me. No, nah, I mean, and that's really good. That's like really great advice, actually, is just to be innovative. And it, it kind of reminds me, and I know it's really not the same, but it kind of reminds me of like music today. So it's like oh, you, yes. hear, you hear one artist come out and he has his own sound and then thousands of other artists come out and copy his sound. So it's like, okay, you have to innovate and set yourself apart from that competition and show that you're different and, you know, just show why you're you and why you were winning in the first place. Yeah, that happens with artists a lot, especially on YouTube. Yeah, they get ripped off. For sure. For sure. So, so you know, who do you look up to for inspiration and why? Gary V is a good answer. I really like, I really respect his his attitude and his mindset. And he goes hard. He goes hard and he gives away everything that he learns for free and if he can. And um, he's super successful. He's mega successful. And I think people can learn a lot from his attitude. But originally, I didn't like him. I was turned off by him. I'm like, who the, who the hell is this guy? Is he going to try and sell me a course? You know? And, yeah. <laughs> and then um, after I got hit with him again and again, I'm like, oh, my God, he's the real deal. I better check him out. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. So I'd say between him, you know, and then I've got, you know, the old school guys that I like and that I, I, I like what they've done. And that's, you know, I have my grandfather and my mom's side badass dude right because you could have multiple mentors i got money mentors i got business mentors i got family mentors right you know my old man and my grandfather have, have done a great job at, at, at just having huge influence in my life and shaping me into the person i can, uh, can i can be you know for sure man that's dope so how do you define success as an entrepreneur meaningful relationships and meaningful work that's it there's no dollar value there's no achievement level. There's no finish line. It's, are you experiencing meaningful relationships with your team, with your wife, with your family, with your kids? And are you experiencing meaningful work? Are you doing what you love? Are you psyched? Are you psyched to do it? If you can have those two things, it's success. Money is arbitrary because if you're providing value and you're humming along with those two aspects right there, the money will come. You'll find a way. So just those two things what I focus on. For sure, for sure. And so how would you like for people to remember you and your companies? The dude that shared his lessons with people, the dude that didn't know anything, right? Because I started out, I don't have a college education. I, I'm high school educated. I'm a fireman. I'm a blue collar worker, right? Uh, granted, I went to school for paramedicine and things like that. And I spent a lot of time going through fire academies and I did a lot of schooling and a lot of college for it. But nonetheless, I didn't go to business school. Right? I didn't go sit down in a classroom and have a business professor lecture me and teach me about taxes and other stuff. You can do this on your own. You don't need to follow the traditional path. You don't need to go have a bunch of debt and go to a four year college and learn some shit that you're never gonna learn. You know what the biggest comment is that I get on my TikToks and my Instagram and my videos? Is I wish I would have learned this in school. Exactly. And so I want people to remember that this guy did it without school and you can do it through self-education and other means. And there's a way, there's a way if you're willing to put in the work and all you got to do is self-educate, find out what to learn. And so that's what I'm trying to show people. And so that's what I want to be remembered by. That's a, that was a good question. For sure, man. It looks, Hey, shout out to the firefighters too. Cause I just moved, <laughs> I just moved to the West coast three years ago in mm -hmm. 2017. And this mm -hmm. was like my first time I first moved to Vegas. So it was like, crazy yeah. smoke coming from la and like the wildfires and it's man, oh it's, yeah it's insane so yeah man appreciate that uh for sure Thanks. what about you do you have something like that something like well um something that you're working towards like what do you got going on on the side i'm curious what you're doing too because i see your branding and i know you're doing a podcast but i haven't had a chance to ask you kind of what you're into i'm i'm, I'm pretty curious man man i'm into everything but I'm really like, I like personal finance. Uh, I like trying to figure out ways to make passive income and kind of just help people from back home where I'm from, which is North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Like just help people learn more about their finances and, and how to, 
you know escape the rat race and get rich but right now it's like i'm really falling in love with content creation so mm. just trying to create 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 and you know it's like a good way to leave a legacy like you said and you know help people you've never seen or met i like that so then do you like you then now obviously you love talking about money and finances for sure so what do you think about the question how much do you make um if your kid asked that to somebody what would you tell your kid yeah just to put it out there i don't have kids okay. but <laughs> i would i would um i would say that's not important right now you know to me personally it's never important what you make and this is gonna sound crazy but like if you if if you if you make real money you can tell you know you don't really have to say it but it's not important what you make because you can grow from anywhere you know you can make a thousand dollars a month but if you know how to save and if you have like a low monthly expenses you can grow from there so i mean you know i'm not a fan of that question i never asked anybody that question and how much money you make really doesn't matter to me i sure i can see i see where you're coming from now have you ever on a second note have you ever asked someone how they made their money oh yeah one thousand percent like i spend all my time reading and um i spend a lot of my time reading the, the reading and learning from billionaires to figure out how they made their money and how they got where they are so i definitely always want to know how people did it like I, my mind is just built that way like I, I always ask how and i like to be hands-on with things myself you know yeah and i think the reason i brought that up is because i really think that people are afraid to ask about it i really think that people are afraid to ask about money now yeah. i understand that why um you know i remember once i asked someone hey how much how much do you make i asked my dad he's like it's not appropriate it's none of your business don't ask me that question and so for my whole life i'm like okay i can never ask anyone ever that ever ask anyone that question again and so i was afraid to talk about money and so i was afraid to say how'd you make all that money because i thought it would be rude and so it yeah. separate because i was afraid to ask one question it kept me from asking other questions related to money and yeah. you know and i thought i thought it was interesting i was like why why you know and i get it you know you don't want your you don't want to compare your 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 financial situation to someone else's and think that you're less than or or better than i get that part of it but it stops you from asking how and i bet your life changed when you started asking how people made their money yeah yeah my life changed um when i read rich dad poor dad and i was like i was like 21 when i first ever heard about an asset like I never heard about assets or investing before I was 20, 20, 21 years old. And then I read a book and they said, you can make money in your sleep or you can, you can buy something that makes you money. I'm like, man, my life changed. I, I'm like, I'm about to spend the rest of my life buying assets. Dude, it's amazing how much that book has changed people's mindsets. So what's your favorite asset class to buy of things that make you money? Yeah, um, I like, honestly, man, I like, uh, dividend stocks but okay. i like stocks you know um because that's the i guess in my eyes that's the purest form of passive income because you can you don't even really have to do much much research if you have the right sources mm -hmm. um but right now right now i'm working on getting into real estate so you know my goal is to get a duplex rent one side out living the other side i'm trying to live free and like just eliminate rent I like that a little house hack action, dude. That's such a great way to go. If you can save up enough money to get a down payment, like three and a half percent down on a duplex, rent half, live in the other half, and then start stacking chips, mortgage free, rent free, you can set yourself up forever. You combine that with a Roth IRA and start chunking away like 500 bucks a month, start investing that in the stock market too. Oh, dude, if people just did those two things. Exactly, man. And I'm, I'm working on, I'm in the process of building up my business credit right now. So I can't awesome. have that down payment. You know what I'm saying? To, yeah. So, you know, to yeah. get that duplex. So that's my goal, man. What about you? What, what, um, what's your favorite asset class? Uh, that's a good question. My favorite would be Tezos of uh, the oh, cryptocurrency. Yeah. I love cryptocurrency. Um, I go really bullish on crypto for, you know, just about 50% of my portfolio right? Oh, it's really yeah. bullish. However, I balance that with traditional asset classes um, that are designed to not lose money when we go through um, crashes. Yeah. So the important one is the, um, the traditional asset classes. It's all a mixture of different index funds and only 30% sure. of it is stocks. 
The rest of it is long-term and intermediate bonds, and then some treasury inflation protection securities, some gold and some commodities. So I have all those things built in so that I, I back tested the portfolio after I picked out all the index funds that I liked. And so in 2008, it only lost about 3%, only one year. Yeah. And I back tested it even further and it only, it didn't lose much at all on those big crashes. And so that's my goal is to make sure that my retirement accounts and all of those um, traditional investments that I have, you know, for my kids and myself and my wife and my brokerage and all that, they don't take that huge hit when the economy slams down and corrects because it's cyclical and it will happen again. And so that's why I'm bullish on crypto because I need the bullish side and I need the, I need the, the bearish side. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it's crazy because like kind of, you know, I feel like we're similar in a lot of ways and I feel like really, man, my, not to sound cheesy, but I feel like, man, my best asset class is like, is me, is my mind. Like as long as I can create something and bring value to people and help people, it's like, you'll never, you'll never not have money, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm if glad you, you really said that because create. I totally lost sight of that too. You know, you, Totally forgot about yourself. If you're not investing in yourself, oh man, you're going to stay exactly where you are. That's a good point, dude. I appreciate you bringing that up. For sure, man. And look, man, so, you know, what does the future of Vanitor growth look like, man? You know, that's a good question too, because I don't know, dude. I am completely being honest with you. I have no idea. I just know that building up my personal brand is important. And I know that building a loyal following and a loyal fan base is important. And so I'm going to give, 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 give. I'm going to do whatever I can to give. I'm going to keep taking Zoom calls with people. I'm going to keep making TikToks. I'm going to keep putting out YouTube content. I'm going to figure out what it is that really the people need. Because every time I do a Zoom call, a podcast, and I talk to someone, I understand what their pain points are and what their problems are. So while I'm building my personal brand, I might as well do some research and figure out what people really need. Because if then I can figure out where I am going to provide value. And I'm not sure where that is yet. But I have been, uh, we have, we put together a company called Level Up Wealth and we're just going to be able to, I think we're going to end up being an education company where we can help educate people and give them that crash course in business that you need to be a successful entrepreneur without having to go to a four-year college. Because I haven't seen anything like that and a lot of people want to get taught and I get asked the same questions on every live every comment you know um i get all those questions again i need a place where i can teach people without me actually having to teach them exactly. and so i gotta figure that out dude i don't really know man, got any suggestions dope. nah man it's dope man <laughs> and i know i know that building a brand in itself is really fun you know like just yeah. just um trying different things is fun and then watching the growth like you said man just seeing it grow seeing your views go up seeing your subscribers go up like that in itself is fun you know mm -hmm. it's like i don't know man there's no it's no feeling like compared to it then seeing something you an idea you had bringing it to life and then watching it grow and watch it um impact other people and then it, it just spreads like a virus in a good way it it is. It is, dude. It's it's really yeah. cool. And getting paid in admiration, too. Gary talks about that a lot, getting paid in admiration. Yeah. And I didn't know what that was until he put words to it. And he's like, no, admiration? I get paid in admiration. Like, that shit, it makes me feel good. Like, that's currency for me. And I'm like, huh? yeah. what? Like, exactly. oh, my God, dude. I don't know. I think that's cool. Now, it's not going to be this way forever. You know, it's going to get to a point where I'll get so busy and I'll have so many things going on that I won't be able to put the same level of effort and care into content creation. And I'll have to create something that's more lasting and that can serve a greater audience because eventually Twitch will be too busy with comments. I won't be able to read them just like TikTok. TikTok has too many. Can't read them all. Yeah. And so I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. But right now, the journey's really funny. You nailed it. You're right. Yeah, that's dope, man. And it's like, I just think about it i don't know if you are familiar with lil wayne but mm -hmm. it's like lil wayne spent t the last 20 25 years 30 years creating like non-stop just in the studio doing what he loved making music and then he recently sold like his masters for like 100 million so it's like even if i'm sure he didn't even think of that he'll sell it for 100 million when he was like making the music and creating it but it's just yep. like you never know where it can go and how far it can go how big it can go so it's like you know, it's just dope to create. Like my my dream would be to be looked at like someone like Khan Academy. Okay. I'm not familiar. He does educational videos on YouTube. Just explain shit to people. 
and he makes it easy to understand. And yeah. he draws on a black, you know, chalkboard with a pen and and he makes it easy to understand. And I go to him and I'm like, holy shit, this guy breaks it down. It would be, it would feel so good to be looked at in the same category as him. People Man, someone go to for, for education. Yeah, that's crazy because that's the exact thing I said to you before I even... Before we even talk, like it was a DM. I'm like, man, you you break things down, make it simple, and it's fast, and it's you know, like this generation and the younger generation's attention span so fast, and you just get it all in like a 15 second, 10 second video. I think that's genius, <laughs> dude. Do you know how long it took me to figure out how fucking S corps worked? <laughs> it took exactly. Me, it took me like a year to really yeah. understand it. You know, yeah. like really get it. And I'm like, oh my God. And so how can I make this simpler? Like that was a painful process. So I'm, it makes me happy to hear that you said that. Cause I'm trying, dude, I try to make it simple. Yeah, nah, man, it's paying off, man. But, <laughs> um, you know, at, at the end of every podcast here on the We Invested podcast, we like to play a rapid fire question game. So mm. if you're up for that, I ask you three quick questions. And quick answers too, right? They don't even, yeah, yeah, quick answers, but we can we can dig dig deeper into them if we need to. All right, cool. Hit me, dude. Let's For see sure. if I can make the answers simple. I'm going to play a game with myself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look, man, question number one. Where's your favorite place to travel? Ooh, down by the beach. I love beach air, that smell. Mm, campfire, salty air. That's my favorite place to go. Which beach is your favorite, though? Down in Southern California. Yeah, there's this place that I have special memories where you can go camp down in San Diego area, San Alejo, and you can pull up and you can camp on the beach, you know, and there's something about that that was really special for me. For sure. What song explains your life the most? Hmm. That's a good question, dude. Oh, song, song, song. Uh... <laughs> That's a tough one. God, I'm thinking about, I, I just get like this run of songs in my head. Hey, everything from Doja Cat, everything from Doja Cat to Pink Floyd, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I yeah. vibe to all that stuff all the time. But you know what has been like explaining, it has been just there for me. It's just lo-fi, like down tempo tunes. And I throw that stuff on, I get in the zone and it just kind of, it kind of glues my thoughts together a little bit. And yeah. so, dude, it's kind of lame and it's kind of sleepy, but lo-fi is kind of my jam right now. Yeah, man, get you in that vibe and get you in the zone, man. I just cruise, dude, and I like it a lot. Exactly, exactly. So look, man, last question. What's an amazing thing that you did that no one was around to see? Um, I built a Tezos node. I learned how to take an old laptop with Windows and how to put Linux on it and how to go in a command line and build an entire infrastructure that contributes to a blockchain that only a few thousand people have ever done. And I was able to stake the currency myself and play a part of this democratic proof of stake voting system and really get invested in a project that I liked. Dude, it was hard. It was yeah. hard. I was out of my element. I am not a computer programmer, but no one saw me do it. No one even knows what it is. No one even knows like why I was doing it, but I was right. doing it for, um, for, for, yeah, for future reasons. But man, dude, it felt good to be able to hit that enter key and see it work. Like it sounds lame, but for me, it was that little personal accomplishment. Like I put my flagpole on the top of the mountain and was like, dude, I did this. I did yeah. this. I got this. I could fucking do anything. And that's how it made me feel. Cause it was one of those challenges, you know? Exactly, man. Hey, Evan, thank you so much for your time, bro. It's been a great look, man. Great conversation. I learned a lot in this one, man. Hey, I appreciate you. I had a great time, dude. Hey, how can people find you when they're at, on my live? How can, um, and they get to the end of the video. How can people yeah. find your podcast? It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You type in the We Invested Podcast and it'll pop up. We right there. Awesome. And the goal of your podcast is to teach people how to build wealth um, and grow their yeah. money. Exactly. And season three is all about entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. So we just want to teach the people different ways and different avenues that in different businesses that you can start. And we also want the guests to be different resources that, you know, you can go to if you have any questions about that business or you want to utilize their services or whatever the case may be. 
Dude, that's super cool. I'm glad you're doing this, man. Yeah, it's we need more people like you out there doing this kind of stuff and helping to shed some light on on simple, easy stuff like money. Hey, man, thank you so much, man. That means a lot to me, man. And vice versa, you doing the same thing, breaking down escorts in 15 seconds, man. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. I had a really good time with you, man. Thanks for inviting me on here. Like, this was super enjoyable and I had a great time. Hey, man, I had a great time, too. Look, we'll definitely stay in touch, though. I'll follow you on social media for sure. Hit me up. Anyone can hit me up. Hit me up on IG, but especially you, dude. I'll be looking for it, all right? My boy, yeah. <laughs> all right.